let's dig in a little bit more to uh, Rawls's great work, The Theory of Justice, and again, I'm working out of the uh, revised edition. Briefly, uh, overall, this book has, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, and a theory of justice has three main parts. The first part, if you have a look at the table of contents, always helpful to do that to get an overview of the book. Part one deals with theory. Uh, so that's what I'm going to look at, uh, part of part one in this section. So part one deals with theory, and there are two other main parts. The second part moves from theory to institutions. And then the third part of the book deals with ants. Each of these parts subdivides into a number of chapters and each chapter subdivides into a number of sections. So part one deals with theory. Chapter one uh, of part one is justice as fairness. There are two other chapters in, uh, in, in the theory section. Chapter two, which will come in a later video, chapter two deals with the principles of justice. And chapter three deals with what Rawls calls the original position. So what I'm doing in this video is looking at part one, chapter one, and section one of chapter one. And section one of chapter one is called the role of justice. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the subject of justice at the end of this video, and then I'll, I'll return to that. And then and I'll return to that and do more on that in the next video. Okay, so... The role of justice, um, it's, it's, it comes from this idea of justice as the first virtue of social institutions. This is old. That's an old idea that goes all the way back to Aristotle and Plato. But think of that. Uh, why does Rawls concentrate on justice? Because he thinks it is in line with the tradition. And I'll talk more about how Rawls fits into the tradition uh, in, in a little bit. It's the first virtue. It's the first thing that you investigate that... Uh, a social institution must have. It has to be just. Before it's anything else, it has to be just. The same thing Rawls thinks holds for systems of thought. The first thing they have to be is true, right? So Rawls prioritizes justice over things like coherency in the same way that he thinks systems of thought would prioritize truth over things like coherency. Now, it's a ferociously complicated topic to talk about, you know, how truth uh, works in systems of thought, because some people think that the coherency model of truth is what unpacks the term truth and whatnot. We can leave, fortunately, all of that complexity aside. But uh, justice is the first thing to examine when you're talking about social institutions. They must, first and foremost, possess this virtue of justice. Um, what does that mean to have a virtue of justice? Well, that comes a little bit later in the subject of justice. So let's, you know, think our way through a little bit of what Rawls is talking about. Justice means uh, 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 that each individual has equal rights. So he states this very strongly up, up front, and he's going to try and unpack this. So when you start the book, it, it starts off with quite a wallop, at least I find. It's, it's very, you know, very hardcore in what he's what he thinks, and then he's going to moderate it and soften it and accommodate it into a more realistic framework as we go along. Again, um, keep in mind that, you know, when a philosopher is talking about something in a given paragraph or place, that's not necessarily the final view of the author. So read things and always keep reading. Now, um, justice means each individual has equal rights and liberties, which cannot be diminished or denied for the benefit of any other person or for even society as a whole. So this is uh, a, an inviolability founded on justice, that we all basically have certain rights that uh, um, it's, they protect us from, from injustice and um, they, are, they are primary and they can't be uh, negotiated away or taken away for some other interest, right? Let's say the interests of the whole or an interest of other people. Nobody can barter or take away certain kinds of rights that individuals have. And um, Rawls also lays down some, some definitions of society, right? He calls it a cooperative adventure for mutual advantage. So there are advantages for us to get together and work together. And the question is, is how do you parcel out? How do you share those advantages? Because when people get together and, and there's a, there are you know, work economies of scale and advantages accrue to the group, how do you parcel those advantages back out? So when a bunch of people work 
let's say in a collective endeavor of some kind, just loosely, they work together to produce a good like food, right? So a bunch of people get together and they work to produce a good like food. Um, how do you distribute that back? Do you just divide it automatically evenly or do you, you have to figure out some way of distributing these goods? So this cooperative endeavor creates goods that wouldn't normally be there, right? An individual can't run a whole farm or produce as much as a group of people working. Uh, so this argument goes. So how do you distribute the goods and advantages that have uh, uh, been a result of a cooperative, as a, re as a result of a cooperative endeavor? Um, and, and so people in society uh, work cooperatively towards uh, advantageous ends. There's an identity of interests among citizens, right? We, we want to produce food because we all need it. So we share those interests. Um, but of course, there's a, a, a conflicts of interest arise as well, right? So uh, in that case, we've got shared interests where, we, where, where it's cooperative and conflicts arise. Uh, in, in well. So, and, and so justice will have to take this into account and uh, deal with it. Societies and individuals almost always have a concept of justice. Um, there's usually disagreement in here um, and the uh, lack of agreement uh, on what constitutes justice, Rawls says, is no trivial matter. This is extremely important. So a society's structure will reflect its, con its conception of justice and so the idea uh, this shared idea of, uh, of, of, of justice is extremely important because it has a large impact on all of the citizens whose lives fall under the society, which is ultimately governed by this shared idea of, uh, of justice. But of course, it, this shared public conception of justice isn't uh, the only element necessary for a society to function well. It's a lot more complicated than that. Um, so again, we have the social institutions uh, is their first virtue is justice and both of these aren't going to mean uh you know both of these you know social institutions and systems they don't mean anything unless they correspond to their first virtues and again so Rawls says you know that he's probably overstated a lot of this and he's going to work it through to see how well it can be accommodated so Rawls starts by looking at the concept of a society and, and the, a well-ordered society, which advances the good. He doesn't really think that any society is perfectly well-ordered. So he's starting with an ideal model. So a well-ordered society advances the good of its citizens, and it is regulated by a public conception of justice. Okay, that's, that's its first virtue. And um, what is, what's a little bit more, what's this public conception of justice? Well, it's a set of principles of uh, uh, of justice. And so our personal interests can sometimes lead us to conflict and our shared notion of justice can lead us uh, to cooperate. So this public conception of justice in Rawls view is uh, like a big overall agreement. So that puts him in the social contract tradition and the origin of it is this agreement. So there's no metaphysics or, or intuition of any kind. It's just rational individuals getting together and deciding things and agreeing upon principles of justice. And that again, these conditions are what lay down the idea of justice as fairness. Um, we made, and, and so we, uh, uh, it's, again, uh, this public conception of justice is necessary but not sufficient. And so the uh, various goals of citizens have to cohere. So there's a lot of uh, complexities. There has to be coordination for efficiency and uh, in, in order for this to uh, fundamentally work. All right, so there's sort of a lot of hand waving going on in this first section, but at least it gives you the idea of the importance of justice as a topic to consider. It's the primary one. It's the foundation of everything, of, of everything else. It's going to determine how the society is basically structured and the way it should, not, not always how it is structured because some societies are just not just, but if you wanna have uh, any idea of what a just society is gonna look like, you have to have a concept of justice and as Rawls says, justice for that society. Um, in the second section, or, or sorry, the section part, the second part of, of chapter one, uh, uh, justice as fairness, is the subject of justice. So he's going to dig a little bit more into this. Now, what, is, what does that mean? Well, 
all kinds of things, of course, you know, are said to be just, right? Lots of things are said to be just. You know, laws, institutions, we talk about uh, a, a, a just society, we talk about, oh, are those just laws, or is that a just, is that a, you know, sometimes we may not say just, but, you know, is uh, this institution, is it is it a good institution? And by that, we, we largely mean, is it just, is it fair, uh, is it moral? So a lot of these terms are used interchangeably, but we use the word just to apply to lots of different things. And of course, we talk about individuals. Is this a per, is this a, a, a good person, you know, is this, do they have just views? Do they have uh, just intentions, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, we talk about individual actions as well. Individual actions taken by, inst you know, that, that are uh, taken by institutions as well. So we talk about, you know, what an institution did if they, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, incarceration or, or, or benefits or whatever that they might uh, bestow upon citizens. Was it just to do that? Uh, and Rawls thinks that a lot of benefits that, that are, are, are a result of our cooperation are fundamentally not just, and we have to look at ways of trying to balance these things out. And then, of course, individual actions are also talked about in the context of whether or not they are just. Um, so Rawls says, okay, uh, so there's lots of things that are said to be just, and Rawls is not doing everything, right? He's talking about a particular thing that he wants to talk about as being just. So he's not talking about individual human actions and dispositions and things like that. So Rawls, again, is not doing, as I said in a previous video, Rawls isn't doing everything. He's not doing all of political philosophy and moral philosophy and everything. No, he, uh, he is, remember, he's talking about a, a very limited uh, uh, domain. And so what's he really talking about? Well, he says his main issue here, the subject of justice is what he calls social justice. Now, when Rawls wrote the term social justice back, uh, you know, he was thinking about it in the late 60s and in the early 70s when justice, uh, a theory of justice comes out. It, it, the term social justice has had a long history. You can, you can find it in philosophy. You can find it in a variety of, uh, you know, moral theology, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, it was a common term. It's more common today, and it has taken on a number of other meetings. Uh, you know, when people talk about the fight for social justice and, and whatnot, it's uh, a lot of it would be going far beyond what Rawls really meant in his uh, original discussion. And that's fine. But in order to understand Rawls, you have to be careful that you don't, uh, uh, you know, be, be anachronistic in your reading and read all the stuff of today back into him or necessarily maybe criticize him because he didn't anticipate everything of today. Just keep in mind what Rawls is after and ask yourself whether or not he does a good job of achieving his stated goals of analysis. I think that's a fair way to, to read him. But that doesn't mean you let him off the hook and say it's perfect or whatever. No, it's got its flaws too. Um, so for social justice, what he's really talking about is what is the basic structure of society. Rawls kind of slot, Rawls slides around with his terms a bit, which is fine. But it's it's a good idea to, to keep, always keep in mind he's talking about this basic structure when he's talking about the the theory of justice. It's a theory of justice for the basic structure of a society, and not global, not not all societies, and not justice per se writ large for all, all times and all societies. No, the basic structure of a given society, and it's essentially a liberal type society that Rawls is trying to work out. So he's not talking about just any possible society at all, right? So, um, and, and, and he says that, uh, yeah, so the, the basic structure of society um, that is the way major social institutions, so that's important to keep in mind that Rawls is talking about major social institutions distribute, distribute basic rights, duties, and determine advantages from social cooperation. So how do all the goods that result, uh, uh, how are they parceled out? How are they distributed? How does the basic structure of society uh, do that? And so uh, things like uh, uh, private agreements, informal social conventions, uh, much of ordinary life, Rawls says, is way up and above this basic structure. So, you know, you, you think about, uh, 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 you think about it kind of in a little bit of hand-waving way. Think about when, if you live like in a democracy and uh, different parties get elected 
and they have quite different uh, 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 political platforms and things change. Um, you know, a lot of your personal life and the morality of your personal life, that may be largely unaffected. Sometimes it can be heavily affected. But by and large, Rawls is kind of thinking along the lines of your personal life is largely uh, unaffected by these very basic structures of society. And I don't mean like your, your economic life. I mean your, like your personal interrelations with other people, something like that. Your economic life can be deeply affected. And so Rawls would be very concerned with how that 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 deep structure of society will affect you personally. Absolutely, he's concerned with that. But there will be places in moral dimensions of your life that will be unaffected. So he's not talking about those. Um, and, uh, and, and and so what he's talking about is that, uh, uh, you know, the, the ordinary life that's outside of this basic structure, he's not going to deal with that. Um, and now he also admits, if in case, and you're probably wondering, okay, this sounds like a little, this is a little vague. Rawls admits that, yeah, it's, it's a little vague, but just because something is a little bit vague, that doesn't mean that it's not a bad idea to still use it as a concept. We use lots of concepts that are a little vague, to say the least. If you demanded absolute precision for lots of concepts, for all concepts, well, then you're trying to do mathematics all the time, everywhere. And I think Rawls would more or less agree with someone like Aristotle, who says that, you know, if you demanded mathematical rigor everywhere, that's being pretty ridiculous, right? Yeah, that's an a priori demand that would be largely unjustifiable. So when we're talking about history and politics and ethics, we will have to engage in discussions where our concepts are admittedly a little fuzzy. So, so that's to keep in mind. And I'll plow a little bit more deeply into this in the next video, but Rawls is really talking about social justice, but really the foundational basic structure of society. That's what he's interested in at least in this book's discussion. See you next video.